Sergio here with Arthur and Hansen. And for this week's tailgate safety topic, we'll be covering ventilation in confined spaces. With any work task, as hazards are recognized, certain controls must be implemented in order to eliminate or reduce the severity of the hazard to protect affected employees. One of the greatest hazards in confined spaces is a hazardous atmosphere that may contain flammable gases, toxic fumes, or an atmosphere that is either oxygen deficient or oxygen enriched. To learn more about how to test for confined space atmospheres, be sure to check this video out. Wait, no, here, yeah, check this one out. In this case, the atmosphere in the space must be made safe for entry. Now, there are various ways to do this, but the most effective and frequently used method is through ventilation. The specific ventilation technique may vary due to the size and orientation of the space, size of exhaust openings, types of vapors to be removed, and the source of replacement air. Regardless of the technique used, the purpose of ventilation is to replace a contaminated atmosphere with one that is uncontaminated and safe for workers. Ventilation is driven by one of two things, air pressure or differences in vapor density. If you had a vertical tank filled with methane gas and opened the hatch at the top, the methane would naturally ventilate itself out as it is much lighter than air. This method is called natural ventilation. Natural ventilation is a great option when it eliminates the atmospheric hazard and there is no potential for a new hazard to arise. Although natural ventilation is effective in some cases, it may not always be the best option. Let's go back and talk about the example with the vertical tank containing methane gas to show you what I mean by this. So once that methane gas is naturally ventilated and the hazard is eliminated, it is safe for entry. That is assuming that there is no possibility of methane gas to fill the space again. Now, if a worker needs to enter the space and perform repairs inside the tank that requires welding, for example, natural ventilation alone is no longer enough to keep the workers safe. Therefore, Forced ventilation may need to be used. Forced ventilation involves a fan, air compressor, or other machines to either provide fresh air to the space, remove the contaminated air from the space, or both. There are two types of forced ventilation, positive pressure ventilation and negative pressure ventilation. When a space is ventilated by using positive pressure, air is blown into the space and pressurized. The increased pressure then forces the contaminated atmosphere out and allows the uncontaminated atmosphere in. So now if a worker is performing welding inside that space, now that air is forcing the welding fumes up and out of the space so that it doesn't accumulate and create that hazardous atmosphere for the worker. When using positive pressure to ventilate, be sure to keep in mind certain precautions, such as ensuring the intake fans providing the air are removed from any sorts of vehicle exhaust or other harmful gases. On the other hand, there is negative pressure ventilation. And yes, you guessed it, it's the opposite of positive pressure ventilation. A fan is placed so that the atmospheric hazard is blown out of the space, providing the harmful gases or fumes a one-way ticket out of the space. When removing the contaminated air from the space using this method, keep in mind where the exhausted air is directed. The last thing we want is for the toxic gases to be recirculated into the space or create additional hazards to the workers immediately outside the space. These forced ventilation methods may also be used together at one time. This involves a coordinated use of positive pressure on one side to bring fresh air in and negative pressure on the other side to remove the toxic air. This creates a safe place for continuous circulation of fresh and breathable air throughout the entire space. To determine the effectiveness of the ventilation and to ensure the space remains safe for the workers inside, continuous testing of the atmosphere is a best practice. Where ventilating the space is not enough to keep the entrance safe, specialized PPE may be required, such as air purifying respirators to filter out the particulates in the air. To learn more about the types of respirators you can use to protect your workers, be sure to keep an eye out for next week's tailgate safety topic. And if you need any help or additional information on ventilating confined spaces or your confined space program as a whole, feel free to contact us using the information provided below. Be sure to also follow us on all social media platforms so you don't miss out on any more safety tips and tricks. And until next time, be safe and thank you.